Hello, everyone. So today I will be explaining to you how OpenSearch can help us to adopt a friend, also known as pets. My name is Laís Ochoa and I work for Ivan as a developer advocate, where we do our best to manage open source databases such as Kafka, OpenSearch and others for everyone. I also happen to like Python and I live in the city of Munich. So this has led me to organize Pilates Munich's chapter. In my free time, I like to read, to travel, and to code. So what are we learning today and who is this talk designed for? You are all welcome to be in this talk. This talk is designed for beginners of OpenSearch and also Python beginners who are interested to learn about OpenSearch and that want to see how to perform open search queries and to learn a little bit about dashboards. I'll give an overview of open search uh, during this talk. I will also talk about open search queries and so you can understand how to write queries and write your own query. And I will show you how to explore your data with open search dashboards. So we as industry and we as developer, we deal with data all the time. There is a saying that if you cannot measure it, you cannot improve it. We want to collect data, understand data, because data help us to make better business decisions and also to improve our applications. So today we will talk about a tool that can help us with that. It's OpenSearch. So what is OpenSearch? OpenSearch is a distributed open source search and, and the analytics suite uh, suitable for real-time applications, monitor, log analytics, and more. OpenSearch is an alternative to Elasticsearch and is often used to enable search functionalities for your application. One, uh, some of the key features of OpenSearch are the scoring of the entries scalability, it's very scalable, high performance, uh, open search perform really well with a, a large amount of data. And uh, also you can perform aggregations in your data with open search. There is more uh, that you can do. You can also do analytics and so on and so forth. So what are some of the power of open search in action? OpenSearch includes many features that can greatly improve the user experience. Some of them are, for example, we are looking for how to adopt dot, dot, dot. When we tap this, uh, we expect that our search engine could be so smart and powerful that can uh, kind of guess what we are thinking and can, out, for example, autocomplete our thoughts <laughs> or our sentences. OpenSearch actually can do that. It can suggest, uh, suggest phrases as you type what you are looking for. So this is pretty cool, right? But what else? As a humans, we are very visual and we're looking for, we want to look for results uh, in a way that it can be easily to find all the relevant terms. Even like just looking, we can easily identify those terms. So it's very, it's very nice if we can look for something and those terms that we are looking can be highlighted. So all maps can be highlighted. This is another thing that you can have with open search is highlighting maps. Open search highlights the search terms in the results. So you may be thinking there are more things, right? When we are uh, right, looking for things uh, and that we want that our search engine need to perform. Another thing that we can do, and actually we should not do, but we do it because we are not robot. When we are writing things, we actually make mistakes. We mistype things. And those kind of mistakes, uh, are, they are not intentional, but we still will want that the uh, or or search engine is able to find relevant results for us. Open search actually also can help us with that. It can make sense of out of typos and still find relevant results for us. And there is much more. 
such as searching for synonyms uh, that you want to match and ordering by relevance and more. So these are some of those features that we will learn today. And I hope you are motivated about it. Now, we're going to also understand that open source is not only a full text search engine, but also offers some analytics. From the open source dashboards, you can actually drive some insights about your data. We are also going to be showing this today, and I hope you enjoy. So let's see how it's done. And before we jump in and continue, we're going to try to understand some of the terms that are used when we talk about open source. Is it open search storage data or is it open search a search engine? What do you think? It's actually both. So you can use open search to store your data, but also has a search engine, as I mentioned before. So how the communication works, uh, how can you communicate with your cluster? To send, for example, your data, perform search queries, uh, do aggregation and so on. Open source supports communication via the JSON-based REST API over HTTP, HTTPS. You can also use any program language uh, that supports, that has an open source client. Because when you use uh, the open source client, for example, you have more access to more variety of uh, methods that you can use it. So it's, it could be easier to use it. We will use Python because it's JSON friendly language and beginners friendly. But Open Search has support to other languages, so you can check it out. Uh, I know that for JavaScript it has also support, but for others too. Maybe there is a language that you're already familiar and you want to do it with it. When we send data to Open Search, this data is actually organized into something called documents. So documents are units of data that we send to a cluster. Documents are JSON objects containing whatever data you desired, designed actually, to send to your cluster, and documents can be indexed. It's something similar to what roles are in relational databases. So what is index, right? So I already, I already said index. So index, uh, in the plural, indices, uh, it refers to a collection of documents that have similar characteristics. They are logically related. Indices are used to store the documents in dedicated kind of data structures uh, correspond to the data type of the fields that you are sending. We will run, when we run such queries, we actually run a guest index, is how we will see it. They are like database in a relational database. So, Open search, when we, open search will then, when we send our documents, it's created documents, open search will create something called shards to allocate our data. So sharding is a way to divide your data into smaller pieces and each piece is called shards. Sharding is done at the index level. Close to the shards, we're gonna have something called replicas. So where is your data is replicated to? This kind of uh, way that OpenSearch does, does the sharding and the replication, it helps uh, OpenSearch cluster to be highly scalable and also to perform very well when doing search, uh, search queries, for example. Close to the shards, as I say, there are the replicas. And replication works by creating copies of your shards. Replication is configured at the index level as well. A replica can serve search uh, requests just like uh, shards can. So it's kind of uh, you can reallocate some of the requests to the uh, replicas. Shards and replicas, they are organized into something called nodes. A node is an instance of open source that stores data. Nodes are not machines, uh, but actually you can run many nodes in the same machine. A collection of related nodes will, that together contain all our data is called cluster. Clusters are independent of each other by default, but you actually can, can uh, 
search for clusters, different clusters. It's not really common, but you can also do this. So this is like a simple overview how open search works in this kind of flow. So I hope you're familiar with the terms that we're going to be using. And now we can move forward. So the time has arrived and we're going to be now actually looking for our pet. I'm very excited about it. You can find here the demo that I prepared. Uh, you can either scan the QR code or find in the GitHub repository. Uh, for that, we're going to be using Python, an open search cluster, and of course, some data. So let's see how it's in the code. So we have here our repository, uh, including some files such as config.py, where we actually first create the client. And we can see it here. I import OpenSearchPy and I create the client. And once that we have the client, our next step is actually to send the data to the OpenSearch cluster. So uh, you can find here in index.py the function called load data, which actually will enable us to send more than 5,000 documents in one API call by using the helpers.bulk. And you can see here, I give the client the data and so on. So let's run it, let's send the data. So you can see it here that is ingesting the data. It takes a little bit of time because there are a lot of documents, of course, uh, but it's quite fast actually. So you can see it here, we send all the data. If you want to explore how the data looks like, because we didn't really set any kind of uh, mapping of, of fields to certain types, we rely how OpenSearch does this for us dynamically mapping. But you, can, you could also set yourself. You can see here, I will run a function to check how are the uh, mapping is, right? So I have this function called get mapping. I will run it with index.py and I will write get mapping. And this is the results that we can see. We can see all the fields uh, because I'm printing here the keys of this dictionary and we can see here the schema. So for example, if we check out how the birth date is, you can see that what set has a date. So it's already some thing that I wanted to double check. Uh, there are some metadata here, but you don't need to worry about it. And for example, another thing we can check is that weight in kilogram is actually a numerical value. Value. So I think our data was first correct and we can continue with our queries. So we did already send our data and now it's time to query. And I do have some questions in my mind that I want to answer from the data what I'm looking in for a pet. So one of the thing is that I prefer a small animal because I do live in a very small, tiny, tiny, tiny flat, and I don't have space to a big, for a big animal. So this would be kind of one of the requirements uh, or one of the things uh, that I want. And another one is that the animal would be around zero to five years old, for example. So those are two. One is a numerical value and the other one is a date. So we actually can use a search query called range. We can uh, find results in looking for fields in a certain range. So this is how the syntax works for the range. And you can also put different kind of limits. So let's see how it's in action. So we have here the range query being constructed and we can specify the fields. Let's run it uh, with the specifications, for example, that we are looking. I put here 2015 to 2020, the birth date of the animal. So we can get some results here. We could do the same with the kilograms if you are looking for this measure. So we call range and weight in kilograms. 
and we can specify, for example, five to ten to find animals which could be smaller, for example, or at least lighter. And yeah, I can have here some of the animals and I can take a look. So it's actually used like this, the range query. Another query that we have here is the match query, is when you are looking for a word or words that are in certain field. So I already have an idea here about one that we can try out. We can try out to find stray animals uh, in, search, in this category. So let's see how it's in action. A file here called search.py where we're going to be looking for the match, uh, for example. So we have here the code. As you can see it, we have the client and we call the client.search. So let's uh, run some combination about what we are looking. So one thing I wanted to look with the with this one is uh, I can write here match. If I'm not sure how it works, I can do dash dash help. I'm using this uh, the typer, so I do have some instructions here. In this case, I'm gonna be first adding the field and then the query. So for the field, I'll be looking for returned reason. And for the query, I'll be looking for stray. Stray, not star. So let's see what kind of results I have it here. So all this, these pets are pets which are in this category, which is really great. I can already take note on that. I have it here, the name and the chip ID. Uh, so it's already a good result for us. Uh, we're not going to stop only match. We actually can have multi-match, which means that uh, this word or those words would be looking across fields. And this seems like a kind of way of combining things that we want to uh, also check. Uh, the syntax would be like this. Uh, so you have, you have to specify the term and the fields that this, you're going to be looking for those terms. Uh, and so let's see. What kind of cases we can actually do this in the code that actually we can find some funny combination for all pets? So I do have the file here and we have also multi-match here. So you can see how we can construct the query and how we can call it. Let's call this with some funny combination. So for example, here we can have it has uh, multi-match, we're going to be looking in the field's animal name and base color, the word orange. Oh, so we do have some animals that do have the color orange and they are also named as orange. So it's quite funny. And you can do this with different fields and with different values that you want. So let's try to actually write things wrong. Uh, yes, you, it, you also can do that with open search. If you mistype something, you can use something called has fuzzy queries, not furry queries, fuzzy queries. So let's try to use this and see how it's done. You can see the syntax here and some examples of uh, how fuzzy queries actually can help you to correct words and still bring you some relevant results in your match, even if you mistype it. So let's see in action. So we have here our search on the line fuzz, and we're going to be giving a parameter called fuzziness. Uh, in our case, we can give it the automatic one. Uh, so open search can decide for us what kind of level of fuzziness we should be using in our data. So let's call it python search.py fuzz. Now we're going to be looking in the field uh, animal. Let's look for the animal name. It's called pet, but actually we, we intend to find actually pet or some other name. And uh, we can set the parameter to auto, the fuzziness parameter. And you can see here that still we could find results uh, with the word pet. Uh, it would find Betty and so on. So it's quite cool that we can still find results. There are also Boolean queries. So Boolean queries are a combination of queries. We have it here as an example how a Boolean query could be built. Uh, 
for example, you're looking for an animal name or also range of birth date and so on. So let's see how it's in action. So here we have a combined query and we have here two, uh, at least two queries combined that we're gonna be running. So let's run and see what kind of maths we're gonna find. We are looking for a bet and bet uh, is an animal who has born from 2016 to 2021. Uh, and let's just run and we don't need to pass any parameters here. So let's just run and we see it here, the results. So we're very successful. We found some animals here that I will take note for adopting. So now that we check how we can do search queries, we can actually see how we can use open search dashboards to do queries and also to see some analytics, some visual things that you can see from your data. So let's see how it's done. So we are here in the dashboards and the first thing that we need to do is to create something called index pattern. So in order to do this, we can click it here uh, and from this, all these options, there is one called management and in stack management, you click it. You will see here that is index pattern. Let me make it bigger here. That is index pattern here, which we're going to click and we're going to create a new index pattern. So when we deal with open source, we often deal with in indices or index, uh, but in the open source dashboard, it also, it works actually with index pattern, which means that you can combine or you can uh, see all the data from different index, as long as they belong to the same index pattern. So if you have, uh, if you have an index that has a date, it's taken daily and every day it adds the date, the date into your index name. Uh, from the index pattern, you actually com can combine many of the days uh, just by add an index pattern. It's similar to regex, for example, pattern. Uh, so here we already see we don't have this, we don't have extra things there, but it has an explanation here how it works, uh, how you could do it. In our case, we don't have it, so we're just gonna use the name that we have it there already for the index. It's, it will be the same for all index button. So I'm gonna click next. And in the time field, we don't, need, we don't have any time uh, stamp that we want to see all that the frog time. Uh, so we didn't select it. Uh, here we have all the fields and we can also see the types here. For example, just going over some of the fields here, we have one field for the birth date and it's actually uh, saved as a date format uh, according to the open source one. So it's quite cool. I think it's uh, good and it's working. The next step, we can see this data in the discover. So let's go to open source dashboards and then go to discover. Here we see all the data that we have, all the documents and each document here is a hit at the moment because we are matching everything and we have this amount of hits or documents. And if we click it, to see what is the underlying source here, we will see that we can see the data in form of a table, or you can see the data in form of JSON. And we can see all the fields here and what they are, this, the key value of the fields, what is underlying source. From here, we can add uh, filters. So there is an option here to add filter and you can select the field that you are interested and the kind of operator that you want to do. Uh, this, uh, for example, I want to find, uh, pay, uh, let's find intake reason dot keyword to be has. So actually the keyword uh, will allow me, uh, it aggregates or it sees has a, a, a word and I will choose the ones that are interested for me. So. Let's see the intake underline his or dot keyword. So in this case, I don't need to type it because I'm going to be using the keywords once. And let's see the animals who are, for example, 
abandoned. So let's save here and we see here that uh, from the five more than 5,000 hits, we went to 183. So it's already got uh, less hits, right? And we can continue adding uh, more filters. For example, I can also see the weight in kilogram of the animal to be, for example, is between. So we're going to do some sort of uh, also called the ranges. And we're going to see animals who are 10 to 20 kilograms. So our search has now been 58. So we already have uh, many smaller ways of seeing. So you can, we can continue adding, for example, we can see the sex, the animal. And if I don't select the keyword, I will have to type myself the keyword. So I need to see, be sure about the format that I'll be using or what I'm looking for. So it's male or female, uh, he characterized. So I will look for female animals. So it's already showed up here as a keyword and I will save it. So you see, I now I end up with 27 hits. And here it's interesting how we can see all of these animals, but also it's a bit hard to read. So what I will do, I will select just the fields that are important. So uh, important for me, so you will see how it will be much easier to read. So I will add here, the sex name is one of the things that we put. Let's also put <coughs> the intake reason. Another thing that is important from these measures is the ID ship number, uh, because it's where we can actually be easier to find the animal and to, to tell. Another thing we can try to access here is the adjectives. So now we have tables. We can also see the animal name if we are interested. And let's put the animal name. We can move those columns. As you can see, I'm moving the animal name to be the first, uh, first column here. And now it's the first column. So we have here pressures, which is a female abandoned. And this is the ID chip number and the adjectives of her. Okay. So we can also inspect here. If we click in inspect, what we will see, we see the request that, uh, it's what's happening behind the scenes, right? So we send a request to our open search cluster with the query written here, how it's defined, the match phrase, uh, how sex name dot keyword for female. And you see here that they all have some sort of filtering that we did it outside, but here you can see how is it in the query. And we can select this query. Let's see here goes until must not in this one. Let's select this Boolean query. I'll select everything actually. And we have to deal with the parentheses of uh, closing and so on. So let's, uh, so we, we can see the request and we can see the response and the responses and uh, all the hits uh, available and the fields that are there and so on and so forth. There are some metadata that open search added as well for configurations. And I want to quickly show you how you can also do this from the uh, also called console. Uh, so if you go here in dev tools, there is here a console and you see here that we can write our own queries here and it will search for us. Uh, this has some advantages because we don't need to uh, do any authentication. We already can send direct to our cluster and we can see the, it already has another good advantage. It has some formatting for us and is kind of JSON friendly here with highlight for the syntax. So you can see here that it shows where the parenthesis is closed and supposed to uh, close and to start and to close. <laughs> so here I have this one that I copied. We can reuse here in the query. 
we need to double check the if everything that is open is also closed. So you can see here that I can use this tool to actually uh, do some easily to go frog and so on. Uh, but actually, we don't need this fields. We just need the query one. So let's see. Have here boolean and we close and we close. So it's good. And we can hit play. And you can see here that we also gonna find the results here as well. Uh, but this is like if you want to do this from the open source dashboard, you can use the queries here to do directly. Write your own query. Uh, what we're gonna show now is how you can quickly do some dashboard visualization. So let's create a new dashboard. Here I can click and create a new one. Let's pick one of this. I will pick cloud. Tech cloud. Let's do a tech cloud. Here is all data we select, and you see here has for everything. We need to add some bucket. So we're gonna be selecting in terms. Uh, some one of the few that we can see, for example, let's uh, see the intake reason dot keyword and click and update. So you can see here we can see five items. If I want to see more, for example, on 100, we can also click see and we're gonna see more things here. And the tech cloud works like uh, having. Uh, the, the size of the, the words here, equivalent of the number of hits uh, that it show up as a counter. Let's put, see too many here, let's put 50 and hit play. So this is what we see it. Uh, wait, I, we don't need the future here. Yeah, so we see it here and we just want to select to fifth, fifth of them. And you see here a lot of information. Let's save it. Uh, I still think it's a bit hard. It's a bit too much. So I will put 40 maybe. It will look better. Or oh, 30. Or oh, the top 10. Let's see the top 10. <laughs> So we can save it and we can save it as intake reason. And you can see it here in your dashboard has a visualization. Uh, we can take some insights from here. So for example, the animals uh, have more the intake reason being a stray, but there are also interesting things such as moving app abandoned, landlord issues. Uh, those are the things that you also have to think when you adopt an, adopt an animal. You have to think your responsibility in the long term. If you, uh, for some reason, are adopting in a special situation, uh, you need to rethink if you really want to adopt or not. Because you need to make sure that the animal can be at your house, has no uh, issues with your landlord or with the law or I don't know, your house conditions needs to be sufficient for the animal. And also that uh, if you move, you can take care or find someone to take care of the animal or take the animal with you. So I think we need, there's our uh, data, but also makes us to think about. Let's create a new one. And for this one, I'll be using a store bar and I'll select the data here for the metrics. X, Y, X, X. <laughs> so we're gonna select here an aggregation. Uh, let's uh, see from Instagram because then we can see some sort of a distribution of our data in certain numerical range of values. And for the field, one field that it, it will be numerical fields and one that puts here would be weight in kilogram. So let's select it and let's update. Wow, there is a lot of, uh, uh, short ones here and it's very hard to read. Uh, we actually still have use uh, auto interval here so we're gonna be uh, 
type in manually the interval that we want. Uh, so let's put like, I don't know, every one kilogram, for example. So it's already much better, uh, maybe two, so we can see. So we already can see here that most of the animals, uh, they are around four kilograms, maybe are small animals. And yeah, let's save this. Weight in kilograms, let's put like this, save and return. So we already have some data here. Uh, our open source dashboard is being created. I will make it smaller. Uh, let's add a new one also for, for example, controls. We can have a range slider based on pets data and the field weight in kilogram here. And the step size could be also of one. So let's add, let's update and see. So yes, yeah, so we can see here how the variation works. Let's also add this one. It's a range in kilograms of So here we have already three kind of dashboards and you can see that you can create even more. Uh, they all have the same size here, uh, but we can actually make some bigger than the others. We can do something like this. It depends how we want to organize our data. So for example, this one I think is too big. I'll make very small actually and bring it to here. So we can see the three uh, dashboards or oh, the three graphics that we just did it like very easily doing from the open search dashboard itself without any kind of extra program language or any different tool. And from here, you can continue exploring. Uh, here there are many types of uh, kind of uh, graphics that you can do, vertical bars, region map. If you have also lo locations, for example, if you have longitude, latitude in your data set, one thing you can do, you can see this data in, in maps. So it's quite interesting, all these options here that we can, we can do it. So I will close here. Uh, this is just a quick way or a quick overview how open source has as a dashboard and how you can go to discover, create index partner and evaluate a little bit of your data there. And I hope you have enjoyed this part. So it's the end of our talk. I hope you have enjoyed how to get started with open search dashboards and with open search queries using Python to actually find your pet. And I hope you can find an animal that you want to adopt and gives lots of love. So thank you for joining me.